Good evening. Welcome to Hold an Evening Prayer with First Congregational and American Lutheran Churches. Thank you for making time and space to worship together this evening. Each Wednesday throughout Lent, we are honored and delighted to share Holy Communion together, and you are absolutely welcome at the Lord's table. So please join us to share Holy Communion this evening using whatever elements you have available to you. God can and will meet you in this meal, whatever it consists of. And now we begin worship in the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. For this light of heavenly glory, the glow of God's own face, you Thank you. 
Before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our reading this evening comes from everyone's favorite book, Numbers, chapter 21. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there's no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. So my favorite stories in the Bible are always the ones in which the people of God behave so badly it's laughable. Like this one. <laughs> God answers their prayer and sends them a leader who leads them out of oppression. God delivers them time and time again from their enemies, provides them manna from heaven and water from a rock. And then as this story begins, but the people became impatient on the way. So they talked trash about God and Moses. Why did you make us leave Egypt just to die in the wilderness? There's nothing to eat, nothing to drink, and we hate your stupid, gross food. I love these stories so much because for me, they're the most relatable. Like, yeah, I've been there in that spiritual place where I'm like, why do we have to follow you there? And how much longer? And aren't we there yet? We've been trying this new thing for forever. 
doesn't feel good or fun or particularly holy anymore. And I thought there'd be snacks and more like affirmation or satisfaction or something. We never should have followed you out here, right? That whining, grumping impatience is just all too familiar for me as I follow Jesus the way to liberation for all of God's beloved people. And I'm not talking about having to endure y'all's whining or like other people's whining about it or something like that. I'm talking about my own impatience. I have no idea how God puts up with us, y'all, because the systems that we are now trying to dismantle and disrupt in the name of God on the way of Christ are our actual inheritance from our ancestors' impatience with and rejection of God's will. So we created this monster, and now we're complaining about how hard and exhausting it is to realign the church and the world to God's will, and how unbearably long it's taking. Which, I mean, it is, right? <laughs> Justice, love, mercy, peace— they're all hard and exhausting and, like, excruciatingly slow in coming to fruition. So, on the one hand, of course we're impatient and complainy. And on the other hand, none of this is God's fault, so maybe we should stop talking trash about God. And also, like I tell my kids, which I realize as I say this to all of you now sounds completely obnoxious, but I say it to them all the time. In our family, we don't get what we want by whining. Now, I'm not totally sure how we would adapt that for discipleship. Maybe like, we don't participate in what God is doing in the world by whining. Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. You can work it out in your mission statement, right? But what I do know is that it does seem to be true that just whining, or what my generation has coined slacktivism, which is like, it's a play on the words slacker and activism, right? You can see it's slacktivism. And it refers to our preference in general for impatient complaining and high-profile, low-investment action rather than the sustained commitment to following Jesus on the way to God's justice for all, right? So slacktivism. Now, what I know is that it does seem to be true that slacktivism is not what the people of God are called by God and what God is drawing the people of God into doing by God's loving, saving presence in the world, right? This is just not it. So I love these stories because they challenge me in like a really good way to look in a mirror and laugh at my ridiculously bad behavior, my impatience, my slacktivism, my whining, whatever, and to stick with it. Because that's the rest of the story, right? The people whine and complain and be impatient and talk trash about God. And then they keep going. They repent. They confess their sin. And they ask God to help them live. And this is the most exciting and wonderful part, right? Like, I love the part that I can identify with where everybody's complaining and whining. Mm, I hear that. I feel that. That represents me. But the, the most exciting, wonderful part is that then... After all this whining, they repent, they confess their sin, and they ask God to help them live. And God does. Every single time, God does. And God will this time too, and next time, and the next. God is faithful, even when it's hard, exhausting, and slow. And God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's going to happen. That's how the story goes. Our prayer is that it may be done even in and even through those of us who are impatient and whiny and complainy. Am I right? May it be so. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to Oh, so highly favored, the 
help us comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We lift up our praise to you, holy God of justice. You are here, and all is not lost. God, who promised to restore your beautiful creation in which power is returned to those from whom it has been stolen, and who sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to call for repentance of sins and proclaim freedom to the oppressed, in these 40 days, lead us into the desert of accountability. As Christ rejected the deceiver while in the desert, call us to reject the demons that plague us and our world. Help us grow in wisdom and compassion, that we may be the body of Christ made whole once again. When we hide in our own comfort, challenge us. When we hoard power, humble us. When we see only one way, open before us new paths leading toward peace rooted in equity. As we prepare for the Easter feast, let us be joyful that you have prepared a seat for your whole human family at the table, calling us to join with angels and saints of every race and culture to praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy one, God of power and might, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God, our creator, you gave your only child to model for us the giving up of all earthly power, radical love of neighbor, and sharing of all possessions, even giving up life and breath in the name of love. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Creator, our Mother, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. 